Hello, Jolly Roger fans. This is Jolly Steve, and welcome to this first in a tutorial about how to make your own robots for talking to telemarketers using our new Maker app for making your own robot pirates. You can see here I've already got installed on my desktop, and I'm going to give it a try. Let's start it up. I'm going to sign in. And while I'm doing that, just let me let you know that it's important that you have an account with us to use Pirate Maker. The reason that we ask you to have a subscription is because that way, when you're done making your pirate, you'll be able to test it by calling it and pretending to be a telemarketer. So um, you can be in a free trial. Your account could be expired. It'll still work, but you will have to have an account with us. So um, please just make sure to sign up on our website you can sign up here also if you see you've got a sign up button you can sign up here or if you forgot your password but you do got to get signed in and then once you're signed in you're going to get our welcome screen and you're going to be invited to make a pirate now this first page is called the my pirates page and this is the list of the pirates that you've created uh, for those of you that have watched our tutorial about how to make a basic pirate in five minutes. That was a little challenge that um, the development team was given to do their best to make a good user interface so that you can easily and fast, quickly make a pirate. And um, please watch that. It's not the greatest way to learn, but it's a quick demo of how you go through the whole process. So on this tutorial, we're going to take some time now and uh, actually have some time to explain to you how things work. So here we go. Okay, so let's begin. Uh, to start, I'm just gonna press on the plus sign. And today, the pirate that I create, uh, my goal is to create one that will be, I'm gonna start with a basic pirate, um, which is really quick and easy to create. And then later I'll get fancier and add to it. But I'm hoping that this pirate will be really good at talking to telemarketers and uh, others will wanna use it. So my goal in working through this is to get to the point where I've got a good pirate that I can share with the community, okay? Sometimes you want to create one that's just for yourself. Other times you're going to want to share it. I'm going to try and create a good one that I can share. Okay, so starting off that way, let me generate a name. I can either type in my own name, create one myself, or um, sometimes if I just want to see what uh, the random pirate generator can do. Let me touch that. And there we go. I've got, oh, I kind of like that. Okay, so a name, Flem Flossy. Let me just take out a name, make it a little shorter. Okay, Flem Flossy. And then you can put a description in here, which will come in handy if you share with the public later, because they'll be able to read this description about it. Um, and you, you know, later on, you can always edit these properties. You may want to change it to explain a little bit about, um, something that this pirate you think is good at certain types of scams that it's good at catching. Um, but for now, I'll just do that quickly. Um, you can pick your type. We've got a couple, um, of types available now and more on the way. So uh, by default, you're going to get a basic pirate. That's what I'm going to be working with. I could tap full featured. Um, that'll be a lot more recordings and it'll take a lot longer. So I am going to do that in a subsequent tutorial, but not today. Um, and if you just want something that you can use for an announcement um, to just say something like, please stop bugging me, um, you could always go and do, create that. Um, and you can also create um, a different one. We call it an answering machine for bad guys. Um, and this is, um, you would be playing for this one. You'd be playing messages that are just for um, when you expect that you're getting blacklisted callers. Your whitelisted callers wouldn't get these messages. So, you know, more types to play with. Uh, let me go back and pick my basic pirate. Okay, so let's go back to the properties. And you're going to pick the gender. Uh, male or female, and that is just so that um, people that may want to share, use your robot, um, will know uh, to expect what to expect in terms of the voice that they hear. Okay, and you can pick a picture. The default picture we have is our little maker toolbox, or you can pick one of these other pictures we provided. You can scroll right to see some more of them. Uh, last but not least, you can pick an image from your own camera roll. Um, these days, we've got a lot of people who are dressing their pets in little pirate hats, and that works out great too, whatever you like. Okay, so when you're all done, you say create a pirate. I've now got Flem Flossy, and you can see that the status of, of Flossy is that she is in progress, meaning that I've got a couple of categories of recordings that I have to make. So far, I've only done zero. I've done zero of five. 
So I'm going to tap on Edit a Pirate. And when I tap on Edit a Pirate, it opens up our Build Pirate page. On this page, uh, at the top, I've got this little card about Flem Flossy, and I can use it if I have to change the uh, properties that I had already created for Flossy. So if I just touch that little pencil, I've got those pirates. Maybe I want to go and change the picture, and then I could update. I'm not going to do that now. But so you can go back and change those if you want. But really what the purpose of this is to go and um, record different um, funny and helpful recordings uh, in our these different categories. So for all of these, for build building a basic pirate, you can see I've only got five categories and that's why, why it's pretty easy. You'd be surprised how well, if you fill out these five categories, how well this very simple pirate would be able to fool telemarketers at least enough to get them engaged and waste their time on the call for a minute or two. So to show you how to do this, what you're going to be doing is over and over basically going in and just recording your comments, your grunts, your first responses. Okay. Um, recording them is the same process regarding regardless of which category. So let's just start easy with the greetings. Uh, and it's pretty easy to just go in order down them. I'm not going to try and do them all, but let me just do one to start. So uh, on the greetings page, this is just an example of a category. And uh, first of all, you're going to want some general instructions about what it is you're supposed to be recording. Think of these instructions as directions that, you know, if you were in a recording studio, these are the type of directions that you would get from a director, you know, for a podcast or a radio show telling you what, what's up next. So um, this gives you some idea uh, about what you should do. It also tells you um, that how many you need. And what you can see here is that there's only one required, which is that first one, currently untitled, and we have to do one. The others are optional. So when you do any of these uh, pirates, you can choose to have a whole bunch of recordings in a different category or just, you know, one or two, just the minimum, whatever is required. So I'm going to touch the edit button. And when I do that, I get a chance. I'm on an editing screen now. And on this um, page, I get more directions. Okay. Um, you see here, there's more directions. What do you say when you answer the phone? And um, some of these, like the greetings, may be really easy. But if I tap on the keep reading, it's still nice to get some examples. So every one of these, if you tap on that keep reading for every category, you will get a bunch of examples. So I can see here in the, in the second paragraph, you can also add a couple of other ways. For example, yup, yeah, what can I do for you? Okay, so this gives you a bunch of ideas. And, um, you know, we're looking for you to be creative, but some of these are pretty straightforward, like a greeting. So let me just um, make this a really easy one. I'm going to give it a label so I don't have to go and listen to them to remember what I've got. This is just my little hello greeting. And I'm going to tap to record it. Hello. I'll stop. And having done a recording, this one is so simple, as I say, I could just, you know, save my recording. Uh, but you could also do tap to review. Hello. And I will hear myself saying that. And so if I did that and I thought, hmm, that's not my best hello. Let me try that again. So I will go and try it again. Hello. And let me hear it. Hello. Okay, I like that one. So I say save and that goes off to the website and comes back and you see the label that I put on that, hello, and the fact that it's completed. Um, yay, that one's done. So I'm actually done with this category because I can do more, but I don't have to. So if I back up now, what you'll see on the Build Pirate uh, page is that the greetings has a green check mark next to it. So that telling me that I'm done with that uh, particular category, okay? Whereas if I look at the next category, first responses, it doesn't have a green check mark and it says in progress zero of one. So I know that I've got one more recording that's required on that one. Grunts positive has one more recording. Uh, tell a story has two recordings, zero of two and distracting early remarks, zero of one. Um, so let me just do one more for you here. Can tell a story. It's a little bit more complicated than the other ones. Okay. The reason why tell a story is a bit more complicated is just that uh, what we're trying to do is have some continuity between several recordings. So let me go into a story. So here's story number one. And um, in this story, 
what I'm going to have here are three recordings that are all kind of related to each other. Um, and what that means is that let's say I was talking to a friend and I was telling a friend about something I did on the weekend. Um, I would do it in three parts and I would break up each part by saying something like, Oh, sorry, I'm talking too much. Your turn just to get the telemarketer to engage. But by having a storyline, it makes it very realistic for the uh, telemarketer who's listening. But other than that, you can see here, it's just like working with um, the other categories. And if you keep reading, there's lots and lots of good, I've been giving you a quick example, but there's lots of examples in here that'll show you how to put a story together. Okay, so let's back out of there. I'm going to back out now, not try and record it, and just tell you that um, if I did all of that and kept backing out, eventually I'd get to the point where all of the categories would have check marks. And let me now fast forward so you don't have to sit through that. I'm going to fast forward to where I've done that for all of these. Okay, so I should also mention that you can see in Flem Flossy that um, at the top in progress that there's a little progress bar. There's one of five. And if I back out to here, all the way out, there's the where I started on the My Pirates page. And I've got Dry Burger Kate, who I had before, and Flem Flossy, not ready for publishing yet, but you can see that that Flem Flossy's in progress. So if you're building a pirate and you get busy, you have to take a phone call, no problem. You can always back out, come back later and continue, and you'll see that progress. Okay, so you take a break. I'm going to come right back in a second with Flem Flossy all filled in. Okay, welcome back. I've just spent a little bit of time. Uh, making recordings for each of the categories. So now you can see that all my categories have green check marks. And what appears at the bottom now, once you've done all that and they're all complete, uh, you see a button called Finish Your Pirate. And if I tap on that, I go to a properties page um, that lets me, uh, you can see this looks very much like our properties page that we started with, but it does include a new area called Publish Online. And I can choose to not publish it yet or make it private or make it public. And I'm going to cover publishing in the next tutorial. So I won't get into that now. For now, let's just say not published. Um, and I can see the pictures. And I'm now going to finish my pirate. And when I do that, I get a confirmation page. And the confirmation page should be pretty much as you expect, with one exception, which is that there's a field called the creator field. You see here it says creator is drooling Beulah. And um, that field uh, comes from our website, and that's the name that you will be known online for people in the community. If you should choose to share your uh, robots, then um, they will see that name as the creator, and that name will live in infamy. But so let me take a second to show you on the website where that is and how you can change it. Okay, so as you see, uh, here I am logged into uh, the website as Jolly Steve. And I'm on the My Numbers page, but that's not the page I need. i got to get to the Settings page. And on the Settings page, you'll find a box, which is the Making Pirates box. Uh, this box will not be there until you have downloaded a copy of Maker App, installed it on your smartphone, and done your first login. Uh, once you do that, then we know that you're using the Maker App, and then we make this box visible. And what's in here is a really nice uh, help facility. If you click on that, it'll give you lots of info about making pirates. And there's your maker name. That gets randomly generated for you uh, the first time that you um, uh, use maker. And feel free to just put in something there that uh, is a better name for you and more personalized. And there's also a social media link. So when you choose to share robots with the community, if you also want to let people know a little bit more about yourself, what you do in your spare time when you're not fighting crime, then you can put a link in there and I'll just briefly show you how easy that is. If I just go to Pirates for a second and pretend that I am somebody looking to set up my crew and I say, oh, that drooling Beulah, she makes great pirates. Let's see. And then I see here drooling Beulah and I can pick one just by clicking here. I will see a little more about drooling Beulah. And if you look at that, I go to the Jolly Roger page and get to see the world's most handsome pirate. And I'll come back here. And um, as I was saying, if you're on the settings page, you've just got those settings that you can change, use the update buttons, and you are done with um, what you would have to set up on the website. So let's get back to 
finishing up on Flem Flossy in our tutorial. And I can just say that this whole, all this info about publishing, uh, remember, if you just watch the next tutorial, uh, we're going to go into more detail on this. Okay, so now that you know where the creator uh, field, how that is set and where that comes from and what it's for, uh, let's just finish off and say continue. And I say continue and I come back to this page. Flem Flossy is complete, but I really haven't done anything with it yet. Um, so I, if I want to go in now and do the publishing, I'll just go back into edit a pirate, touch the pencil on the top of that big white rectangle at the top, that card about Flem Flossy. If I tap that, then I get to the properties page and the publishing online area would let me do that. So, uh, as I said, I'm not going to do that now. There's only one other thing we're going to close with. Um, the, one of the main reasons to not publish right away is that you probably just want to be able to test your pirate first. So um, just make sure that, you know, it sounds good. You may want to change some of it, um, so some of the recordings. So if you want to do a quick test before you publish, you tap on the pirate actions, and up comes a little um, little page, little box that says that you can duplicate, call pirate, or delete. Uh, don't delete all my hard work. I can duplicate, but we will cover that in another tutorial. So let me just call my pirate. And when I do that, I get a little instruction window that just explains that what's about to happen is that um, we're going to have the Jolly Roger Telephone Company uh, has just created a given your pirate a phone and said, go ahead and call your master. And so if you choose to touch the call pirate button, you get um, your phone asks you to call that number. And if you call that number, then you will be talking to the pirate you just did. To make it work well, make sure you try and sell it something. Do something that a telemarketer would do, and that will give you a pretty good idea of if you're happy or not with your test. And at that point, you could then choose to go on and publish, or to go and add to your pirate, or to go back and edit again and say, you know what, I want to add some more grunts just because it sounds more natural. I only have one grunt. I would like to have a couple more, so I will go and edit another grunt in there and add it and upload it and keep improving my pirate. So it really is an editing environment that lets you continually develop and improve your pirates. Um, if you have an inspiration, um, you know, a couple of days after you've built the first version, go in and you can re-record, um, but you can keep adding and improving on them. Um, and we certainly hope that you do. So there you go. That's uh, uh, the end of this tutorial. I hope you'll follow the other tutorials and learn how to do, go through the publishing process and uh, learn some of the more advanced topics for um, developing these pirates and robots. Thank you very, very much for your time and for giving us a try. Once again, this is Jolly Steve saying, Arr, mateys.